Hello and welcome back. So today we are going to discuss a term that is actually a very confusing that is dioxy growth. Okay, so this is a video on request. So let's start with it. So what is dioxic growth? So dioxic growth or dioxia is any cell growth which is characterized by cellular growth in two phases. Now, if you remember the normal growth curve, so there is a sim single growth curve that we observe. But in case of dioxic growth, there are two growth curves which are observed and that's the reason the term is dioxic. Okay. The dioxic growth meaning double growth is caused by the presence of two sugars in the culture media. That's the reason why bacteria shows two uh, growth phases. Okay. So from the two sugars which are present in culture media, one of it is very uh, easy to metabolize for the bacterium. So it utilizes that simple sugar, for example, glucose first and then it switches towards the other sugar okay and that's the reason why we observe two lag phases and two log phases in some cases okay and when we observe this type of uh, two phase growth we term it as dioxic growth okay so in dioxic growth two growth curves intervene by a short lag phase are produced by an organism which which is able to or which has the ability to utilize two different substrates but it cannot utilize both these substrates simultaneously so it will uh, opt for the one which is easier to metabolize first okay one of which is glucose so when e coli grows in a medium containing both glucose and lactose you will see that it uses glucose first until the glucose is exhausted and after a short lag phase so the lag phase is why so that the bacteria um, gets time to produce enzymes which are required for the utilization of other sugar that is lactose okay so again you find a short lag phase during which bacterium synthesizes enzymes which are needed for lactose to be used and growth resumes with the lactose as a carbon source so if this diaphasic growth of e coli is plotted in respect to bacterial density or number of bacterial cells against time then you will see two growth curves which are followed one after other intervened by a short lag phase okay and thus it produces a dioxic or diphasic growth curve the simple response will be observed in the case of other sugars as well like arabinose maltose sorbitol etc when they are utilized in a mixture or they are um, combined with glucose in a culture media you will see that e coli always prefers the glucose first and then it will switch to the other sugars like arabinose and maltose so this is the normal growth curve so the lag phase is one where uh, we had just tricked the bacterial culture so the bacterial cells which are present on the medium media surface they are adapting to the new environment and slowly they start growing so that is the phase which we term as lag phase then the bacterial cells they start growing and multiplying by utilizing the sugar or other nutrients which are present in the nutrient medium and the number of cells increases that is what we know we term as log phase okay then as the nutrients they get deprived the cells start competing and some of the cells die and we see the stationary growth here actually there is no growth or multiplication is observed the cells are just viable and you find the stationary phase and after some time some of the cells they die because there is nutrient deprivation okay so this is the normal growth curve that we observe but in case of dioxic growth curve you will find two growth curves okay so we will see here first the glucose is used again there is a short lag phase where the bacteria is adapting or it is synthesizing the enzymes required to utilize lactose and then again there is a log phase or exponential phase now this is the another a simple one which uh, actually both are the same 
but you can see first the glucose and uh, lactose are added and here the enzymes are uh, synthesized which are required for the utilization of glucose so the growth occurs on glucose first then again glucose is used up now the lac phase is for synthesis of enzymes required for lactose to be used and again the growth uh, occurs depending on the lactose okay or utilizing or metabolizing the lactose and again the lactose is used up so now you will find the stationary phase so this is the dioxic growth curve now let's see why does dioxic growth occurs so the reason is actually in the uh, mechanism or the working of lac operon and the glucose okay so let's see how, why this happens the enzyme needed for lactose utilization is actually the beta galactosidase now this enzyme it splits the lactose into glucose and galactose the bacteria also here prefers glucose first for the growth and then the lactose can be utilized but only after it is converted to glucose now it is converted to glucose by galactose metabolism okay so it is another lengthy process so always the bacteria prefers glucose first over the other sugars now it has been demonstrated that e coli growing in a medium which contains both glucose and galactose produces the same diaphasic growth or dioxic growth curve as in case of glucose and lactose okay the cause of this dioxic or diaphasic growth is actually complex and is not completely understood but it is considered that the catabolic or catabolite repression or the glucose effect probably plays an important part in it now these are the terms you will find in lac operon okay when you study lac operon so i'm not going to going in detail uh, towards the lac operon here so just remember that the catabolite repression of lac operon of e coli that is the glucose exerts an inhibitory effect that means as the media contains glucose the glucose presence of glucose will exert inhibitory effect in the transcription of lac genes okay so lac genes are one uh, which on transcription produces the essential enzymes for the lactose utilization so the glucose will inhibit the transcription of these lac genes and thus these enzymes will not be produced okay even if the lactose is present in medium the reason or the main culprit here is glucose so once this glucose is completely consumed by e coli the bacterium is competent to transcribe the lac operon genes okay so once the glucose is completely consumed now the bacteria will transcribe the lac operon genes resulting in resulting in production of necessary enzymes that help in metabolization of lactose okay and this is how lactose is utilized and then we see the another diaphasic growth okay or the growth curve so this is about the diaphasic growth or dioxic growth curve okay so i hope this video is useful to you all thank you for watching do like my videos do share my videos with your friends and don't forget to subscribe my channel and keep supporting thank you